In this video, we are going to look at the stereoselectivity of the E2 mechanism. Stereoselectivity is referring to whether the reaction prefers to make the cis isomer or the trans isomer of an alkene when cis and trans are possible options for your products. So we have two examples that we're going to look at to apply the stereoselectivity concept. And um, with these examples, I'm going to walk through the mechanism of the E2 reaction. So in the E2 reaction, we are going to be removing the leaving group from the molecule. In this particular molecule, the leaving group is OTS. That stands for tosylate. The tosylate is, is not an atom. It's a group of atoms, and it is an amazing leaving group. So here is our carbon that holds the tosylate leaving group. And in addition to eliminating the tosylate leaving group, we're going to be removing a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. So either one of those hydrogens right there. And let's go ahead and draw the available hydrogens or eligible hydrogens onto the molecule. So we know where they are and that helps us draw the mechanism. And now we're ready to start drawing the mechanism. If we look at the base that we're using for this mechanism, it is tert-butoxide. Tert-butoxide is our bulky base. And the bulky base prefers to grab hydrogens from the end of a carbon chain, although it doesn't do that exclusively. It will also still grab the inside hydrogens. It just has a preference for these outer hydrogens. So the bulky base is going to grab any one of these three outer hydrogens the carbon hydrogen bonding electrons are going to come in to make the carbon carbon double bond and the tosylate is removed from the molecule and that gives us this product right here the other possible product comes <clears throat> from the bulky base grabbing one of the interior hydrogens moving those carbon hydrogen electrons in to make the double bond and getting rid of the leaving group. And that would give us this product right here. So these are the two possible products in terms of the location of the double bond. Now, whenever we're drawing the products of an E2 reaction, after we draw or identify the location of the double bond, for example, between carbons one and two versus between carbons two and three, we should also look at those two products and ask ourselves if it's possible to draw a stereoisomer of that product. So did we draw, in this case, we would say, did we draw a cis or trans isomer? And if so, can we draw the other isomer? Now this particular alkene, because it's at the end of a carbon chain, this is neither cis nor trans. There's nothing on this carbon atom that is also on this carbon atom in a quantity of one. So we do have a hydrogen, but then we have two hydrogens over here. So this particular isomer is neither cis nor trans. If we look at this molecule over here, each carbon atom has a hydrogen on it. Those two hydrogens are on opposite sides of the double bond. So this is actually the trans isomer. And whenever you have a, a cis or a trans, it is always possible for the other isomer to have been formed. So that means that we did not just form two products. We actually form three products in this reaction. We have the two regioselective products with the uh, double bond located in two different places. And then we have two stereoisomers, the cis isomer and the trans isomer. So three total products for this reaction. Now, the question is, of these three products, which one of them is major? When we're making that decision, the first thing that we want to look at is the base. Remember, the base is going to dictate um, the major product in terms of substitution. This is a bulky base, which means that its major product, the major product formed from a bulky base, is always the least substituted alkene, the alkene that has the smallest number of R groups. So here's our carbon-carbon double bond. This particular alkene has one R group and three hydrogens, while this alkene has two R groups, two hydrogens, and the cis isomer is the same. So of all three of these products, our major product is the first one that we drew with the least substituted al alkene. And again, that is because we are using the bulky base. 
And these two products are the minor products. Now of these two, we could also predict which one of them is formed in the least amount, meaning of the two minor products, which one is the minorest of the minor products. And this falls on the relative stability of these two types of alkenes. We've already talked about the, how the trans alkene is more stable than the cis alkene due to steric hindrance. And so because the trans alkene is more stable, of these two, and again, we're just comparing these two, the trans alkene will be formed in a larger amount because it is more stable. So this alkene, the cis alkene, is the most minor product of all of them, and that is because the cis alkene is less stable than trans. And since we're practicing, let's also label these as Seitzef and Hoffman as well. Remember, Seitzef and Hoffman um, labeling only depends on the degree of substitution of the alkene. It has nothing to do with which product is major or which product is minor. The least substituted alkene is always called the Hoffman product. Again, it doesn't matter if it's major or minor. And then both of these guys right here, the more substituted alkene, is always called the Seitzef product. So we just practiced a whole bunch of things all at once. We practiced regioselectivity, we practiced stereoselectivity, and we also practiced labeling Seitzef and Hoffman. Let's do it again. We have another alkene down here and a base. And for this reaction, remember, we're going to be removing our leaving group, which is the bromine, and a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. Now we have to be careful because this carbon right here, we can see that it has four bonds, which means that this carbon has no hydrogens on it. So even though it's adjacent, it's not eligible in this reaction for um, any type of elimination because it doesn't have a hydrogen. So we only have one hydrogen available in this reaction. And our base is going to grab that hydrogen, move the carbon hydrogen electrons in to make the double bond and get rid of the leaving group. And that will leave us with the double bond in this location right here. Now, whenever we draw, and we only have one possible product, whenever we draw this product, we should always be asking ourselves if we could draw a stereoisomer of that product, and we can. We can't really use the words cis and trans to describe these two isomers. They don't meet the criteria of cis and trans, but we can draw the two stereoisomers. Now, in terms of which one of these is major and which one of these is minor, regioselectivity is not a factor in this case because the double bond is located between the same two carbons for both of our products. So unlike up here in this example where we had two places where the double bonds could be located, down here the double bond is only located in one spot. So we can't say major versus minor depending on if it's more substituted or less substituted. They're equally substituted. One, two, three are groups on the carbon-carbon double bond. So in this case, we're going to have to think about steric hindrance with the substituents. And um, it's a little bit tricky to tell these two groups apart, but basically we have our bulky group, which is this ring, next to um, our second bulkiest group in this isomer versus our bulky group trans to the second bulkiest group. So this particular isomer is gonna be experiencing the most amount of steric hindrance. And because it is experiencing the most steric hindrance, it's our minor product and the one where the bulky groups are spread out as far as possible, that will be our major product. Now, as far as labeling these as Hoffman or Seitzef, that type of labeling is not applicable in this reaction because both of the products are equally substituted. Hoffman versus Seitzef is just looking at how many R groups you have and comparing the number of R groups that you have. So since both of these have three R groups, one hydrogen, we can't classify one as Seitzef and one as Hoffman.